ninth day of our IWAT summer school, and we will have two talks. The first will be on chromatic homotopy theory, and the second will be also on chromatic homotopy theory. Okay. So our first speaker is Yu Tao Liu from the University of Chicago, and he will tell us about the construction of VN self maps. Welcome. All right. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Yes. So today I'm going to talk about the construction of VN self maps. Uh, it is the central part of the periodicity theorem, which describes a special class of uh, periodic maps on type N spectra and also its relation with the model of K series. So the main references for today's talk includes uh, one lecture in Professor Lewis notes and several chapters in a two books by Revenue on chromatic homotopy theory. Uh, in this talk, we will assume everything to be P local and we will only consider the ordinary cohomology with mod P coefficients. So first recall that in Zhipeng's talk, we have constructed the Moldova K theory from the Brown Peterson spectrum, Kn. I mean, Kn is the Moldova K theory. It is constructed from BP. Uh, the homotopy of Kn is a graded field over Z uh, over Z over P with one generator in degree 2P to the N minus two. And then uh, in Wei Nan's talk, we have a classification about all the finite CW complexes. I mean, or similarly for all the finite spectra. Uh, we call X to have type N if N is the smallest integer uh, where the KN homology of X is non-trivial. So one natural question may arise from these classifications. So is there always exist uh, type N spectra for any integer N greater or equal to zero? Furthermore, you, uh, you may want to ask that, are there any systematic ways to construct type N spectra when N uh, keeps increasing? Uh, before we answer these two questions, first let's see some early examples about type N spectra. So the most direct, uh, the most direct example is the sphere spectrum S, which has type zero because K zero homology is the rational homology. So you know K zero of the sphere spectrum is non uh, is non trivial. And then if you consider the self map on the sphere spectrum, uh, which represents the the product by P on its homotopy group. Then it's a uh, cofiber of the map, I mean, which is the molar spectrum, uh, which we write as V1. You can check that the V1 has type one because uh, the P multiplication induces an isomorphism on K0 homology, uh, but not on K1 homology, which means it's cofiber has trivial K0, but non-trivial K1 homology. So it has type one. And then following this example, uh, Adams and Toda proved that when P is not two, you can find another self map on V1, uh, which on K1 homology, it induces the multiplication by V1. So recall that V1 is the generator of the homo homotopy of K1. And you can show that the cofiber V2 has type two. So this multiplication gives you an isomorphism on the K1 homology. So K1 of the cofiber co is trivial because they cancel out with each other. And then Smith, uh, Smith and Toda showed that when P is at least a five, you can find another self map on V2 with the same uh, idea. So it induces the multiplication by V2 on K K2 homology and the cofiber has type three. And you can continue, but you have to stop at V4 because people cannot find explicit ex uh, self maps on V4 with the same property. However, such kind of uh, constructions motivates uh, a special type of self maps so basically we want the map to induce uh, some isomorphism on, on the corresponding KN homology. So such kind of map is called a VN self map. Basically, if you have a finite spectrum X, then a self map, uh, a VN self map, uh, is a, it's a map where the induced, uh, is, the induced map on the KN homology is an isomorphism. While for all the M uh, other than N, on KM homology, the induced map is, is neopotent. So if you begin with a type N spectrum, and if you can find the VN self map on X, you can show that its cofiber must be a type N plus one spectrum because it's an isomorphism on KN homology. So they cancel out with each other, but it is not an isomorphism on KN plus one homology, which means the cofiber 
has has non-trivial Kn plus one homology, which has type n plus one. Moreover, you can see that uh, for this definition, type n spectra is the most uh, interesting case. Because if the type of X is less than N, so let's say its type is M, which is less than N, then there cannot be VN maps. Otherwise, the cofiber will have a trivial KN homology, but non-trivial KM homology, but M is less than N, uh, which is impossible because of the properties of the model of K theory. And on the other hand, if X has type greater than N, then the trivial map will be a VN map. In other words, the most interesting case is the type n spectra and also how to construct and classify the type n uh, the vn self map on them so uh one observation is any power of a vn map is still a vn map because you only need to satisfy the isomorphism and the neopotent which does not change when you replace the map by its powers uh, and one reason why we call it to be a vn self map is you can use some algebraic arguments to show that some power of such map uh, will induce the multiplication of some power of Vn, I mean, up to some multiple in a Kn homology. Uh, the reason why this thing is true is because if you consider all the endomorphisms of Kn star modules over the Kn homology of X, because X is finite, so this one is a finitely generated Kn star module. So uh, as a as a self map which induces an isomorphism, F, uh, F induces a unit element inside of this module, which means uh, inside of this algebra, which means some power of F must be, uh, must stay in Kn star, which will agree with some power of Vn, I mean, up to some multiple. So here is why we call such map to be a Vn self map. And moreover, we can replace the neopotent here by trivial. So we can make the definition uh, clearer. So it is an isomorphism on Kn and the trivial for all the rest of Kn. The reason is um, if both M and, and the, the degree of F is, is large enough, I mean, larger than the dimension of the top cell in X, then by analyzing the HSS computing Km homology, you can check that uh, the induced map on Km homology must be trivial. So you only have, have finitely, uh, finitely many new potent maps with one isomorphism map, uh, isomorphic map. So if you replace F by some, some of its power, all the neopotent, all the neopotent maps will vanish. So you can assume them to be trivial. Well, uh, one of the important properties for the VN map, so we have the following theorem, which is proof, proved by Hopkins and Smith. Uh, the rough idea is if you have two different uh, type N spectra with a map H between them, and both of them admit some VN maps F and G, then you can always replace F and G by some of their powers to make this diagram commute. In other words, you can see you can see that the VN maps are compatible. I mean, with the maps between type N spectra up to some power. Moreover, if you choose Y to be the same as X and H to be the identity map, then this theorem tells you that the VN maps on X are unique up to powers. So here is the proof of the uniqueness, uh, which I'm not going to talk about the details. Uh, one second. Uh, the main idea for this proof is to apply the Neopotent theorem, which is mentioned in Wayne's talk. Uh, actually, one version of the neopotent theorem. The idea is in the p local case, the neopotency of a map can be detected by all the more of a k series. So what you are going to do is, if you have two different VN maps on on X, then first you can apply some algebraic arguments uh, to uh, to make F and G uh, induce the same induce the same maps on all the KM homologies. Then according to the neopotent theorem, their, their difference must be neopotent. Then according to the fact that X is a finite spectrum. So you can always replace F and G by some of their powers, uh, which, finally, uh, which finally eliminates their, their difference. So uh, another important property for the VN map is the periodicity theorem. Uh, which is also 
kind of the main topic of uh, of the talk today. The theorem is quite uh, it's quite short. Basically, it claims that any finite p local type inspection has a VMAP, and moreover, we know the VMAP is kind of unique up to uh, up to powers. So basically, you will have a unique VMAP on each type of inspection. So now we have a kind of systematic way to uh, construct type inspection when n increases, because for each type n spectrum, we can always find that VMAP. Taking the covariable, we will have a n plus one type n plus one spectrum, and you can continue this con uh, construction forever. So I'm going to uh, explain the sketch of the proof of this periodicity theorem for the rest of the talk today. The idea is to use the six subcategory theorem, which is also mentioned in Wayne's talk. Uh, basically, if you consider the collection of all the finite p local spectra, then you can list all of its six sub, uh, six subcategories, where each Fn, Fn consists of all spectra with type greater or equal to n. Moreover, according to our previous uh, discussion, you know that uh, any uh, finite spectrum with type greater than n has a VMAP where any spectrum with type less, less than n cannot have a VN map. So if you, if you consider VN to be the subcategory of all spectra admitting VN maps, then VN must be between Fn plus one and Fn. What we want to show is we want to show VN equals Fn because we want to prove all the type N spectra have VN maps. So according to this list of uh, six subcategories, here is one idea we can use to prove the periodicity theorem. We only need to show first, we want to show VN is a six, uh, VN is a six subcategory. And then we want to construct one, uh, one special VN map on some special type N spectrum, which means VN must be larger than Fn plus one. So it, it must be Fn according to the thickness. The proof of the thickness is not so hard, which I'm going to explain now. Uh, in order to prove that Vn is thick, you only need to show that um, it is closed uh, under both taking cofibers and under taking summons. For the cofiber, basically, if you have uh, x and y uh, with, with Vn self maps together with a map H between x and y, according to the, you, you, uh, according to the compatibility of Vn self maps, you can always replace f and g by the powers to make this square commutative, to make this square commute. Then actually there will be a natural map here from the suspension of the cofiber to the cofiber. Uh, you, you can show that this map is also a VN self map on the cofiber CH by, uh, by just uh, chasing the diagrams. I mean, after you apply the KM homology on this commutative diagram. So you will have a, two uh, long exact sequences on the KM homology. So you can chase the diagram to show that this map satisfies the two properties for a VM map. So uh, in order to show that it is close on the taking summons, basically if you have a VM map on the wedge sum of X and Y, so what you can do is first you can replace F by some of its powers uh, to make f commute with this composition. So here is the projection on the onto the onto the first component, and here is the inclusion into the first component. So uh, you can always replace f by some of its power to make this uh, to make this true because of the uh, because of the finiteness condition on x together with the fact that f is a VMF. So you you want to analyze by the KM homologies. Then you can then the composite uh, defined in this way will autom automatically becomes uh, a VMAP, which means if you have a VMAP on the wedge sum, then you can construct a VMAP on each of its summons. So now you can see VN is closed under both taking covariables and taking summons, which means it is a thick subcategory. So now. So now we only need to construct a single VN self map uh, on some special type N spectrum. 
uh, but not now. Because we will need some important tools before we start our construction, we will need some useful tools to analyze and express those VNC of maps. The first, uh, wait a second. What is the nature map from the cofiber of H2 itself? Uh, such a map exists, but it sounds like there's a natural one that we can choose. Oh, uh, so you don't have to choose a natural one. Basically, you only need a map which makes the diagram commute. commute. And then by chasing the diagram, you can you can show that it, it will be a VM map. Okay. Uh, the first tool we are going to use is the Spanier Whitehead Duality, uh, which is the analog of the Dewey algebra, but we apply it on on finite spectra. The rough idea is uh, for any finite spectrum X, uh, you can always find its due. So there is a unique finite spectrum dx, which is the spanning what kind of due of x, such that if you take the double due, you will recover x, and you will have the following at the junction, which kind of uh, mimic the Dewey algebra. Basically, you can if you sw switch x from the left side to the right side, basically you only need to replace it by dx. So now, uh, so if you consider the Kn homology. Using the fact that a Kn star is a graded field, which means any module over Kn star is a free module. So the, hom the Kn module homomorphism from the Kn homology of X to the Kn homology of Y will agree with the Kn homology of DX, uh, smash, uh, DX smash product with one. Basically, you are just applying this at the junction. I mean, when you consider Kn to be uh, Yeah, so basically you want to you want to take z to be kn smash with y. So then you apply this at the junction. So with this idea, now we can express a self-map. Basically any self-map, so let's say f is a self-map on x, then f will correspond to a unique element in the homotopy, uh, in the homotopy group of dx smash with x. Basically, you just take this x to the to the right side. To become dx. Moreover, this spectrum dx match with x is a ring spectrum, and its uh, its product is given by the following composition. So here, the middle map epsilon from x match dx to to the sphere spectrum x uh, is the adjoint of the of the identity map on x. Uh, and you can show that this product uh, expresses the composition of self of self self maps on x. So now what we want is uh, we want a VM self map on X, which means we want to find, a, find some element in the homotopy of DX mesh with X, such that its image in the KN homology is a unit element, which means it induces an isomorphism on the KN homology. So according to this equation. And moreover, you want to show that it is neopotent. Actually, we can uh, give some stronger assumptions. Uh, we want to show that it's, it's image on all the all the other KM homologies are trivial. If we can find such special element, then basically we, we have defined, I mean, we have constructed a VN self map on X. So now the problem is how to compute the homotopy of this DX smash with X. So here we need our second tool, which is the Adam spatial sequence. So it is a spatial sequence which computes the homotopy groups of uh, spectra. Its E2 page is the X group uh, of the cohomology, I mean, the cohomology with small p coefficient of the given spectra over the standard algebra A. So A is the collection of all the uh, cohomology operations, I mean, on the mod p cohomology. In general, uh, the computation with the Adam spatial sequence is, is super hard. Because the because the structure of A is quite complicated, so you know, so we want to use the Adam spatial sequence to compute the homotopy of this special spectrum. In order to apply our computation, we have to make the computation easier. So one idea you may think about is, it uh, if it is possible that the cohomology of R is a free A module. 
Uh, but unfortunately, this is impossible because when R is a finite spectra, H star R is bounded above, but A is not bounded above. So this can never be a free module over A. However, you can have something slightly weaker. It is possible that the cohomology of R is a free module over some, some sub-algebra sub of A, I mean, which are bounded above. Moreover, when you apply the atom spatial sequence, so when you compute the EQ page, if you replace A by this uh, sub algebras then uh, within all the degree uh, we are interested in, uh, the computation will not be uh, affected. Which means we can use those sub, uh, sub algebras instead of A to apply our computation. And you can see the X group will become uh, more, more computable. So following this idea, one second. So following this idea, uh, we are going to define some special subalgebras of A. Uh, and, and we have to talk, uh, talk about the structure of A a little bit. So uh, I'm, I'm only going to talk about the case when P is an old prime. Uh, if P equals two, the standard algebra A will, be, uh, will have a different expression, uh, but easier. So you can apply the similar but more simple argument on that. And there is a commutation by Milner, which is on the dual standard algebra, A star. So A star can be expressed as a tensor product between a polynomial algebra together with an exterior algebra with these uh, generators. The product on A, uh, which is represented by the co-product on A star can be expressed by these two equations. So one natural way to choose, a, to choose generators on A and also to choose the uh, subalgebras we want is to choose the dual of these special elements in these two equations as a collection of generators. So what we are doing is, so we let this uh, P, T to the S and Q, I to be the dual elements of these elements inside these two equations. And you can show that, I, I mean, uh, so just from these two equations, you can show that the piece power of any P and the, the square of any QI will, will be trivial. So now we have all the construction we need and we are going to apply our construction. I mean, all the preliminaries we need. So the idea is what we want to con construct is we want some type N spectrum X. So such that both the homotopy of DX match with X and the KN, uh, it should be the KN homology, not cohomology. And the KN homology of DX match with X are not too hard to compute because we want to find an element here whose image here is a unit element. And also according to our previous idea, by replacing A, by replacing the, the standard algebra A by some of, of its sub algebras, we have the following definition. So we will call X to have strongly type N if its cohomology is a free module, I mean, under the sub algebra of the previous several generators up to some degree, I mean, up to N. And also we want the AHSS computing the KN homology of X collapses. So uh, the first condition guarantees that we, uh, the EQ page of the atom spatial sequence is more computable. Well, well, the second one guarantees that we can compute its KN and we can relate it directly between its KN homology. I mean, with its cohomology because you have a collapsing uh, spatial sequence here. Uh, one problem for such, uh, for such definition is these two conditions are too strong and it is too hard to find uh, explicit examples which satisfies uh, both conditions. So we have to go one step backward. So we define something which is called a partially type in. The rough idea is with do uh, with do required the AHSS collapses, but here instead of uh, assuming the cohomology to be a free module over these generators, we only need these generators to act non-trivially. So you can see the second one is weaker than the first one. The idea of our uh, construction is, here is the idea of our construction. So first we show that the, the strongly type N implies type N. I mean, that's why it is called a strongly type N. 
then we show that uh, there exists a VMF on any strong type N spectrum. So recall that the strong N, the strong type N spectrum has the property that both the homotopy and the KN homology are somehow easier easier to compute. So you so you can apply the uh, atom spectral sequence to compute its homotopy, and then you use the relation with the AHSS to consider the image and uh, under the KN homology. Then we want to set up some machine which transfer any partially type N spectrum to a strong one. Recall that the partial one is weaker than the strong one. <laughs> but since here the conditions are less uh, are less strict, so it's possible to find some explicit examples of a partial type N spectrum. Uh, so I'm going to explain one and four briefly and then focus on two and three. For step one, basically uh, it can be proved by just uh, considering the DHSS computing KM cohomology. So uh, you can you can check that the first non-trivial differential on this spectral sequence is, is implied by the action of QM. So if you assume the cohomology is a free module over QM, then this differential will, will cancel out everything. So its KM cohomology will be trivial. You can apply this argument when n is, m is less than n, which proves that it will be a type n spectral because its KM homology is not trivial. You have a collapsing HSS. And for four, so here is one uh, explicit example, uh, which is constructed from the classifying space of uh, Z over P. Uh, the idea is because now you have a concrete structure on the space, so you can compute the operations of all the generators in the same algebra explicitly to show that they act non-trivially. And then according to your degree argument, you can show that it's AHSS computing KN homology collapses. So we are going to focus on Q and three. So first, uh, if we begin with a strongly type N spectrum, we want to show that there exists a VMAP. So Q, uh, so two important elements, so two important characters inside this argument. One is the atom spectral sequence. The other one is the KN homology. So we will need some connections between them. This connection is the connective model of K theory, the small k. The idea for the small k is its homotopy is the polynomial algebra over Z over P with one generator. But here, this generator VN is not is not invertible. And you can also con construct this connective connective KN. I mean by just removing the all, uh, all the other generators in the uh, Brown Peterson spectrum BP. So uh, so actually you will have a natural map from the capital KN to the small KN, which induce isomorphism and homotopy for all the non-negative degrees. And according to the computation of BP star BP, you can compute the cohomology of the small KN with small P coefficients, which turns out to be the standard algebra A uh, divided by the ideal generated by QN. So if you consider the atom spectral sequence for the small KN, you can show that it collapses because you can compute its E2 page explicitly. Uh, so after applying a chain of phase here, the X group over A for these two things is the same as the X over the exterior algebra of QN, I mean, which is ZP of QN over QN square. And this one can be computed explicitly, which is ZP, Z over P with one generator in a degree of VN because its E2 phase already agrees with its homotopy, which means the whole spectral sequence collapses. So now let's start our proof for the VMAP. We assume X to, to have strongly type N and then we write R to be DX matched with X. We want to find a special element in the homotopy of R whose image is, uh, whose image is a unit element in the KN homology of R. Sorry, too early. And we compute the homotopy of R from the atom spectral sequence. So you have the following diagram. Uh, I'm going to exp explain this diagram. So first, for the first row, the first row is, is the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence computing the small KN. 
the sphere selection and R, which is uh, X mesh with DX. So the horizontal maps are induced by the natural map. So here is the unit map. Uh, and here is the map, which is uh, at the joint to the identity map on X. Then the maps among the first the three rows are the natural algebraic maps uh, among the X group when you replace the well, when you replace A by some of, of its subalgebras. So here A N uh, is the subalgebra of A, which is generated by I mean the, the previous uh, the previous mentioned generators up to, up to some degree. I mean up to N. And here E Q N is the exterior algebra of of Q N, which is a subalgebra of A N. And A is a subalgebra of A. So you will have the downward maps like this. Then you can compute row three explicit, explicitly to get row four, because you know these two things are the same as ZP with one generator, which is the same as K and star. So here, the V here is the V in the middle column is the, is the image of the VN in K and star. And then for, for the map offer, uh, according to the fact that you assume the AHSS for X, I mean, the AHSS for the KN homology of X collapses. Uh, and you can show that the, the, the differential map on page N is induced by QN. But you know the spatial sequence collapses, so the differential map is trivial, which means QN acts trivially on X. On, on X and, and hence on R. So this one can be splitted into the tensor product between this X group together with the cohomology of R. So you, you will have this isomorphism. And, and, and this map becomes the natural inclusion to the, to the first component here. So now uh, what we are going to do is we want to begin with the element we want to begin with the element V here. So V is an element here. Uh, according to the fact that X has strongly type N, I mean, which means X is a free, is a free module. Uh, is, a, is a free module over, I mean, all of those generators we, we mentioned before. So you can prove that some power of V uh, must have a pre-image uh, through the math beta. So here, this one is the exterior algebra of QN, and this one is the subalgebra uh, generated by all the previous ex uh, generators. So you can always leave some power of V here, and we denote that element to be Y. Moreover, uh, because AN uh, contains all the low degrees of the senior algebra A, so within some degree, the, the, the map gamma here will be an isomorphism. If you only comes to low degrees, then basically using A or N as the base algebra will make no differences for the X group. So you can also lift the Y to here. And then according to some uh, arguments on the EG page, basically by, by explicitly computing the, by explicitly discussing the X group, you will show that there will be a vanishing line on the EG page. So if you consider some power of Y, uh, when the power when when the power is large enough, uh, the differential map on page n, starting from this power, will be zero because because it will cross the vanishing line. I mean, when the page number is large enough, uh, when when the page number is small, I mean, you can kind of compute the differential map explicitly. So you can always find some power of y such that it is a permanent cycle, which means all the differential map all the differential maps starting from it vanishes. So this element will express uh, some element in the homotopy of R. Now, if you go downward up to here, uh, up to here, you know that the image of this special element is some power of V, V to the TI, let's say. But you know V is the image of the VN here. I mean, starting from the small KN, which means if you consider the map from here to the small KN, so you will still have VN, I mean, some power of VN. And moreover, because you know the relation between the capital KN and the small KN, you have a map from here to here, 
from here to here. So if you consider the natural map from pi star r to kn star of r, the element here must be mapped to the same power of v inside the kn star of r, which turns out to be an isomorphism uh, in the kn homology of r. So up to this point, finally, we find this special element in pi star of r, I mean, with the required properties. So we constructed a v map on the strongly type N spectra X. So here is for step two. Uh, and then remember that we still have one more step. We need to construct some machine which transfers uh, partially type N to, to strong type N. Uh, the only difference between the partially type N and, and the strong type N spectra is whether the uh, whether these generators of the standard algebra act either non-trivially or freely on its cohomology. So uh, if you fix any of these generators, you can write the cohomology, uh, so you can break it into two pieces, the free part and, and, and the torsion part. Uh, in fact, you can, you can make the free part non-trivial because you can, assume, uh, you, can replace, you can replace X by some, uh, by some power of X. Then according to the fact that some power of these generators are trivial and also the Cartan formula, I mean, which computes the standard action on the product of spaces. You can always show that when M here is, is large enough, the action of any of these generators must be, uh, I mean, must have some free part inside the cohomology of X to the M. So now what we want to do is, we want to keep the free part, which is non-trivial. And we want to remove the torsion part T because the strong type N requires uh, everything to act freely. So you want to eliminate the, the torsion part. And we, have a, and we have some construction which is called the Smith's construction. So the idea is uh, if you consider some power of the spectrum or space X, so you, you can define a natural action from the group ring of the symmetry group of all the K. Uh, on this on this uh, power of, of spectrum. Uh, then if you if you have any idempotent elements, so let's call it E inside of this group ring, uh, you can define E with X to the K to be the following direct limit. So it is a sequence of maps induced by this E. And you can define one minus E times X to the K similarly, because this one is also an idempotent element. Then you will have a natural splitting of X to the K uh, into E times X to the K with one minus E to the uh, times X to the K. If you consider the cohomology, then the cohomology of X to the K will split, will split naturally. I mean, as the, as the product, between the cohomology with the two as important elements. So recall that we, we already split the cohomology of X into the free part and, and the torsion part. Uh, I guess it jumps too fast here. So we already split it into the free part and the torsion part. So if you consider the cohomology of E times X to the K, so this one is the same as E times the cohomology of X to the K. And you know this one is the sum of the free part together with the torsion part. And you know the, the product between something free and, and something torsion is still free. So, so finally, you will have E times the torsion part to the K together with some free part. And you can show that E times the free part is still free. So finally, you will have something like this. You will have E times the torsion part to the K together with something free. Now, what you are going to do is you want to find the proper, some proper K, proper power K and the important element E to make E times the torsion part to the K to be zero. So now you will only have the free part left and you will obtain a strongly type N spectrum. And this can be done by a theorem in uh, combinatorious or I guess. Basically for any non-trivial zero P vector space, you can always find the integer K greater than zero, and also some special important elements, which depends on K. 
which depends on k and the dimension of v, such that e times u to the k will be trivial for all the proper subspace of v. Uh, but e times v to the k will, uh, but e times v to the k will be non-trivial. So we can apply this theorem in this situation. So here we have a graded, uh, here we have a graded uh, vector space. So the case is slightly different, uh, but the idea is the same. So we choose the cohomology of X as the V here and the U as the torsion bar T here, because we already know that F is uh, non-trivial. So you can, you can check that the torsion part always satisfy the, the, the uh, degree condition. Then actually by these idempotent elements, e times x to the k, x, e times t to the k will be zero, which means, which means the spectra, which means this spectra will be the strongly type n spectrum we, we obtained from the partially type n spectrum x. So now we finish the whole machine. And then we go back to the strategy page. So basically, uh, we want to start with uh, explicit, explicit partial type inspection, and then we make it into a strongly type inspection, and then we construct a VMF on that. So we, we find a special type inspection which admits a VMF. Then according to the fact that the collection of all the spectrum with VMFs is sick, uh, basically we show that that collection is the same as the collection of all the type greater or equal to inspection. So we have, so we finally proved the periodicity the theory. Uh, I guess that's all I want to talk about today.